Lukeville with us on the johnstonrvcenter.com hotline. He's presented each week by ATIX, AAATIX.com, 822-7382. Your tickets to Bama, K-State, down in New Orleans, and also all the basketball games coming up at all the schools in our state right there at ATIX. What's up, Lugs? How are you? Good morning, guys. I'm doing really, really well. Hope you are, too. Doing fantastic. Thanks a lot. Um, do, do you want to recite all the names that are in the transfer portal, or can I just ask you a question about it? Oh, no. I mean, it, I mean, how long is your show? So I think you probably just ought to ask me a question. <laughs> hey, on, on that, no joke. Uh, when uh, I watched it last night, it's four hours long, HBO. But Eminem, uh, during his induction speech, read every rapper influ- that influenced him growing up, and he had him alphabetized. And I promise you, it was four pages, uh-uh. and he went through the A's, the B's, oh. and, and you, know, uh, you know, there were a lot of B's. I mean, it just went. He's just like, Ouch. I mean, the crowd. You could hear him starting to get restless. He's like, I'm about a third of the way through. <laughs> I got some more. And he read them all, and I mean, he read them all. It was all of them. It was pretty awesome, I guess. But we do not want you to recite the entire one thousand people okay. in the portal. Yeah, is there good? Uh, give me, give me a couple though that you've seen in there that, that could be a game changer for even like an Alabama or an Auburn or somebody like that. All right, so the first thing I I thought that came to mind when I saw Spencer Sanders go into the transfer portal was, one, that he's using the extra year of eligibility, and number two, it would look awfully good in a Hugh Freeze offense. Oh, wow. I mean, when you, when you marry Spencer Sanders and that skill set and, you know, what we've seen in the past from Hugh Freeze's iterations, but what we saw with Malik Willis – And even though it's just a one and done type scenario, what if it helps you get off the mat, right? What if it helps you accelerate the improvement of the program, generate some momentum? I just, I like that marriage between offensive identity and the skill set and a guy that's played a lot of football, been highly successful. Um, You know, when I, when I look at all the names and I, and I, and I see guys uh, in there, you know, it's hard to find like, top tier corners or a top tier offensive tackle or you know somebody that everybody would just be fighting and scrapping over but Dason McCullough at Indiana may be one of those guys um, he may be the one edge rusher that most of the upper to higher tier teams that recruited and come out of high school will will actively be pursuing because you just don't see a lot of difference makers as pass rushers that are in the transfer portal that has been as productive as he has in a short period of time so you know, the one thing I don't like seeing, guys, and I don't know how you feel about it or if you've talked about it today, I, I understand that the, the the value of earning a degree, and it is so important, and that the graduate rule transfer applies. If you've graduated, you got your degree, transfer anywhere you want to go, and, and you're immediately eligible. But I don't like the fact that you can transfer as an undergrad and then transfer again and again and again the way JT Daniels is attempting to do this because I think eventually – the program's not the issue. Maybe you are. And and I just, I wish that we could come up with a way to eliminate that part of it. Hey, uh, let me ask you about Dion to Colorado. Uh, two parts here, Lugan Bill. Um, do you think in the next three years it'll be more Lincoln Riley at USC or more what we saw Miami Mario Cristobal? Second part, how good is his kid at quarterback, Shador? So the answer to the first part uh, entirely revolves around whether or not Colorado has guaranteed and put into writing to Deion Sanders and his coaching staff that they will lessen or eliminate the transfer portal restrictions that they have towards incoming transfers as it relates to transferable credits counting towards a degree. That's the biggest issue. It's the biggest problem right now at Colorado. If he's been assured that that's going to be corrected, then it will probably lean closer to Colorado. Now, I don't think it's 10, 11 win type of SC in, in year one. Um, that's the answer to the first part of the question. The second part of the question is, yeah, I think Shadur Sanders, we had him graded out as a power five player coming out. If his dad had not taken the Jackson State job, I think he would have probably, uh, I don't think he would have stuck with FAU. I know he was committed there for a while, but he's a power five level talent. The issue that you're going to run into. And, and I appreciate what Deion Sanders is trying to do here. He's setting a tone. He's letting you know if you don't want to compete, um, then you just go go into the portal right now. And I get that. But when you're in your introductory press conference and your son's with you and you point at your son and say, hey, that's your quarterback, you're essentially telling the rest of the quarterbacks there's not going to be a competition. And so what are they going to do all of a sudden if you've got Shadour Sanders there 
and all the other quarterbacks walk out the door. So, you know, I, I think there's some things that got to be massaged here over time, An entirely different realm than the one he's been living in at Jackson state. But again, long way of getting to it. You fix the transfer rule at Colorado. You have a chance. If you don't, you don't. And, and it looks like he is at t- attacking that coaching staff through the eyes of recruiting. Uh, Tim Brewster is known as a good recruiter, right? And, yeah. then, and then Willie Taggart is, I mean, he's built his whole reputation on recruiting. If he's able to get Taggart to go and join Brewster, I mean, that's pretty good on traditional recruiting as well. Is that correct? I mean, you know those guys. Yeah, it should be. I think that, you know, in today's day and age, you recruit, you, excuse me, you hire recruiters first, X's and O's second, uh, especially if you have some elder statesmen on the staff that can bring the young guys along from a coaching perspective. But it's all about recruiting right now. It's all about social media. It's all about interaction. It's all about relationships and and how relevant you are and, and do you resonate with kids. Um, I, I kind of jokingly said to somebody the other day, I said, I understand the whole social media aspect of this for Dion and 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 how and and how much that's really really worked but also be careful that you don't video yourself too much to the point where you inadvertently put a violation on film it's like (laughs) at some point or another you got to keep some things tight to the vest or close to the vest in in your efforts in recruiting ESPN's Tom Lugaville with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Lugaville with us each week courtesy of ATIX, AAATIX.com or 822-7382. Your uh, Bama K-State tickets if you want to go to the college football playoff, if you're looking to go over and watch Georgia play in the uh, Peach Bowl, all the basketball tickets right there at ATIX, AAATIX.com or 822-7382. Um, if, if Clemson had gone to Cade Klubnik earlier, do you think they'd be in the playoffs right now based on what you saw him do in the ACC championship game against North Carolina? Absolutely. I think Dabo Sweeney cost them a college football playoff uh, berth this year. And I, I understand that, you know, he's always been a staunch supporter of every one of his players. And he's always been somebody that has believed in his players, has defended his players. But he's also responsible to 84 other guys, not just one. And I, I, I know DJ is a really good kid, but I think what we what we see is what we get. That was evident Really midway, it was really the Syracuse game that really kind of reared its ugly head because they were going along and they looked like they were improved. DJ looked like he was improved, but I don't know if they were necessarily winning because of him. And from the Syracuse game on out, there were so many opportunities to just insert Cade Klubnik and move forward, and they didn't do it, and I think it cost them a playoff berth. Now, do I think this particular Clemson football team is a playoff caliber team? I think that's really debatable. I would probably lend to say no, but if you would have been a one loss or an undefeated ACC champ, you're going. Uh, Let me ask you your thoughts on a couple of quarterbacks that didn't have good years this year. One was based on an injury, but had really good 2021s in the ACC now in the portal. Brennan Armstrong and Devin Leary. Uh, What do you think about those two guys and what are good fits for them? So I think Brennan Armstrong, he would be another great fit with Hugh Freeze. I think he's going to be highly coveted. Because you got to realize what he had done in two years prior to this last fall was really remarkable. It's not like, I mean, they've got good players. They don't have elite players on offense. So obviously there was not a match there with Tony Elliott and the offensive scheme. Um, Robert and I obviously had done a great job. He's now at Syracuse. I, I, I believe that, that Brennan Armstrong will be, will be highly coveted. I think with Devin Leary, a lot of people are going to really scrutinize whether or not he got any better this year. Prior to the injury, was he any better? Did he grow? Did he develop? Did he have the type of year that a lot of people were expecting from him based off of 2021? I think if you ask most people, they'd say, no, I don't, I don't think he, he hit the level that we were expecting him to. And I think he needs a certain type of offensive scheme. I don't know if he's going to be a guy uh, like I look at him and I say, well, why wouldn't you go take a look at Mississippi State? You're not a runner. All right. Um, you've played a lot of football. It's a it's a it's an air raid system. I think that could be a good mix. Um, so I, I think I think a lot of them have to find what is the what is the right fit for their skill set. Uh, I'm interested in your thoughts on two corners that are in the portal today. Uh, one of them is a former five star guy in Denver Harris who is leaving Texas and in with some baggage. But I remember us talking about Tony Grimes when he was going to North Carolina yeah. and how he was reclassifying and was going early and all of that. What kind of what kind of guy can Tony Grimes be in the portal? Is is does he have good football ahead of him? 
I think so. You know, he was injured late in the year, and he's banged up for most of the year. He didn't play in the NC State North Carolina game, which I had. Uh, didn't start. He was a late scratch. But again, he's tall. He's got long arms. He was coveted by everybody. He has enough sample size on film to garner a lot of attention. Now, Denver Harris is of equal talent, much younger, far less experienced. But again, tall corners aren't standing on every street corner. And I look at, you know, the thousand plus kids or whatever it is, and you start to look at those premium positions, right? You're not really, I mean, you can find a running back, you can find a receiver, but corners, pass rushers, offensive tackles, quarterbacks that truly upgrade your team. The portal's not chock full of all of those guys, but I do think that those types will be highly coveted. And here's what we got to remember guys. I mean, look at the numbers. Here's the part that bothers me about all this. Nobody's doing the math. I mean, since the 1920, 2019, 2020 cycle, over 19,000 players have gone into the transfer portal. And 40% of that 19,000 has actually signed somewhere. So understand the grass is not always greener and you better find a chair when the music stops because the numbers are not in your favor. I, I want to ask you, Tom Lugabill with us on the Johnston RV Center.com presented by ATIX, 822-7382. I want to ask you about a coach that's in a sense of the transfer portal and that is Jim Leonard. After this bowl yeah. game, if Hugh Freeze hired him as his defensive coordinator, if Alabama, if Pete Golding moves on and Alabama hires him, is that an automatic slam dunk hire from what you've seen with Leonard at Wisconsin? From an X's and O's perspective, I think absolutely. I think if there's a criticism or if there's a, you know, okay, well, how is this going to fit? It's going to be a lack of knowledge of the recruiting base, right? And we've seen criticism of that before. doesn't mean it can't be done. doesn't mean that you can't pull it off. Um, you know, let's, let's not forget Nick Saban was in Toledo and East Lansing and very, very quickly adapted to, to Baton Rouge. You know, I was actually surprised Jim Leonard wasn't the top target for Cincinnati. Um, I would, I would be interested to see if he's a target for Louisville. Yeah. Uh, he's a really, really good football coach. And, um, I think from an X's and O's perspective, a work ethic perspective, he'd be a home run for a lot of people. You just got to examine those guys that are coming out of that conference or any other conference going into the Southeast portion and the competitive nature of recruiting where basically all the players by and large are residing. How quickly do you hit the ground running in that regard? Hey, one quick matchup from the uh, college football playoff. Um, I think it's fascinating that we get Ohio State sneaks in and now Georgia gets rewarded playing four seed Ohio State. Uh, we know Smith and Jigba is not going to play, but if they get healthy, what kind of chance do you give Ohio State against Georgia? Well, I think they'll be well prepared. Um, you know, I think where I, I give them a, a, a solid chance because they've got talent across the board. I think um, having that experience against Michigan will actually help them because you're going to see as physical a style of game, if not more so from Georgia. So you know exactly what you're getting into. But I think in, 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 in this equation, the one thing that benefits Georgia is they're not having to defend a dynamic runner at quarterback. And when they don't have to do that and they can play 10 on 11 and they know where the quarterback's going to be at all times and he's not a dangerous runner, he's a subtle, elusive pocket mover, but C.J. Stroud's not going to just take off and kill you. Um, that helps. That benefits Georgia. And I, here's what I think Georgia will do. Even if, if Ohio State, because I think Ohio State, even down Jackson Smith and Jigba, has a really good receiving core. But if you recall the Tennessee matchup and how Georgia to chose to play them, they had just lined up and said, we're going to get in your face. We're going to press you. We're not giving you a free release off the line. And we're going to see if Hendon Hooker can throw the ball into tight spots consistently that result in explosive plays. I think they're going to do the exact same thing to CJ Stroud. All right, he is ESPN's Tom Luganbill. Rockstar says every movie now either has Jessica Chastain or Margot Robbie. That said, this Babylon uh, trailer looks pretty good. Is that good. bad? Oh, no, it's it not is bad. Not. It's, just, it's just something I noticed. Like They're the two leading ladies. They are the go-tos right now. Well, I throw Jennifer Lawrence in. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. The, the, only yeah way, no doubt. the only way to be yeah. any better is if every Waffle ha House had those two in it, too. Then, then we're talking. I get waffles and those two. That's fantastic. So That's absolutely very, yeah, smothered, <laughs> chunked, and covered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lucaville, thank you very much for the time. Have a great week. 
All right, guys, take care. Uh, bye. I was going to ask him about Babylon, but that was too good of a line not to end on. Luca Bill with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. He's presented each week by ATIX, AAATIX.com, A22738. You want to go down to the Sugar Bowl. Uh, if you want to go watch Bama, Auburn, UAB play hoops, you want to maybe even go to one of those playoff games, ATIX, AAATIX.com, or 822-7382.